Nearly everyone has had the experience of going to a movie with their friends only to leave the theater and debate their interpretations of the ending. Well, it turns out that there are certain movies that people get wrong all the time. Here in the video today, we've gathered 10 such films and we're going to talk about how you may or may not have been getting them wrong all along. Now, do keep in mind there are spoilers in this video. Of course there are, but we've generally chosen movies that have been out for a few years to prevent upsetting anybody. Number 10. 500 Days of Summer In 2009, the romantic comedy 500 Days of Summer premiered in theaters. Many people related to Joseph Gordon-Levitt's heartbroken character Tom and bashed Zoe Deschanel's character Summer for being a villain who put him in the friend zone despite him being such a great guy. However, the film was meant to make the viewer examine their own behavior in past relationships because everyone paints themselves as the victim after a breakup. Throughout the entire movie, Summer makes it very clear to Tom that she is not looking for a romantic relationship. Despite her honesty about the emotional wall that she put between them, Tom continued to believe that she was the one, and he pushed his expectations on her. When she didn't reciprocate those feelings, he felt betrayed. He fell in love with the idea of Summer rather than listening and paying attention to the reality of the situation. During a 2019 interview with Entertainment Weekly, Gordon Levitt and Deschanel revisited the film for its 10-year anniversary. Gordon Levitt said, I think a really fun thing to do is to try and watch it and just put yourself in Summer's shoes the whole time. Number 9. Citizen Kane Citizen Kane is considered one of the greatest movies of all time. Every single film student in the world has been forced to sit through this masterpiece by Orson Welles and analyze the deeper meaning. However, if you're watching it as a casual viewer at home, it may be easy to misinterpret what's really going on. In the film, we watch a man named Charles Foster Kane rise from poverty to become a millionaire. His dying word was Rosebud, and the journalists in the film go crazy trying to figure out what Rosebud actually is. Donald Trump claimed that Citizen Kane was his favorite movie, and during an interview, he was asked to analyze Rosebud. He said, A lot of people don't understand the significance of it. I'm not sure if anyone understands the significance. But I think it means bringing a lonely, rather sad figure back into his childhood. Throughout the rest of the interview, Trump describes Kane's misfortune as a modest fall, and he said that the character needed to get a different woman if he wanted to be happy. Well, here's the thing. Trump was at least halfway right. At the very end of the film, we see the camera pan over all of Kane's treasures, and it stops on his beloved childhood sled, Rosebud. Earlier in the movie, we see that he was playing in the snow with this sled during his last moments of childhood innocence. Basically, he spent the rest of the movie acquiring wealth, and he realizes that he was never as happy as he was when he was that carefree kid sledding in the snow. Number 8. The Shining the Shining is one of the most famous horror movies of all time. But the author of the book, Stephen King, is famously frustrated that the director, Stanley Kubrick, was the one to completely miss the point of his story. The plot surrounds the Torrance family, who are spending a winter in a haunted mountain resort called the Overlook Hotel. In the beginning of the movie, Jack Torrance had been sober, and the hauntings do not begin until he starts indulging at the hotel bar. In the movie, there is a scene where Jack is reading an issue of Playgirl magazine, which is full of pictures of nude men. Internet sleuths did some digging and realized that the specific issue had an article in it about incest. There are several other clues in the movie that suggest that Danny Torrance was being sexually abused by his alcoholic father, which would explain the young boy's deteriorating mental state. Combined with Jack Nicholson's portrayal of the character, this made Jack Torrance crazy from the very start, and it's possible to interpret the movie as being about mental illness instead of a haunting. In the book, Jack Torrance is a good father who is struggling with his addiction, and their family tries to keep it together in the midst of a very real supernatural experience. King notoriously disliked Stanley Kubrick's movie version so much that he made his own TV miniseries of The Shining. During an interview with The Guardian, King explains that The Shining was one of his favorite books and the characters stuck with him for years. He decided to write a sequel called Dr. Sleep. Danny Torrance is all grown up, but he is obviously traumatized from the events of the Overlook Hotel. He inherits his father's alcoholism, but he's managing it by going to AA. We learn that he does, in fact, have psychic abilities. There will be a movie version of Dr. Sleep coming in 2019, starring Ewan McGregor as Danny Torrance. Number 7. American Psycho after American Psycho premiered in theaters, it was bashed for glorifying toxic masculinity and violence. It was even protested by the National Organization of Women who demanded a boycott. But in reality, it was directed by a woman named Mary Heron, and it was meant to do the complete opposite of what everyone assumed. As a dark comedy, we're meant to see how Christian Bale's character Patrick Bateman is narcissistic and uncaring about other people. He also, incidentally, is a serial killer. 
Bateman admits that he is a murderer multiple times throughout the movie, but everyone around him is so self-absorbed that they aren't even listening. According to the author of the novel, Brett Easton Ellis, that the novel was actually a critique of male behavior. I think a lot of people um, don't realize that uh, who haven't read the book. Number six, Donnie Darko. After Donnie Darko premiered in 2001, plenty of people felt their jaws drop at the end of the film. Fans cannot seem to decide if the character Donnie truly did send a plane engine traveling through time in order to save the world, or if he was simply mentally ill. Since he admits to having emotional problems, has visions of a giant rabbit, and frequently goes to therapy, the audience can believe either might be true. The writer and director Richard Kelly was just 26 years old when he released Donnie Darko. In 2017, he re-released a new director's cut of the film so that he could go into more detail in order to answer the questions that fans had about the movie. He said, I wanted to provide a bunch more information than was there. It's a very dense, layered film, and there's a much bigger world beyond the film. So, if you're still confused by the plot, you might just want to watch the new cut and its commentary. Number 5. Shutter Island Shutter Island is about a U.S. Marshal named Teddy Daniels. He's played by Leonardo DiCaprio. He's investigating the Ashcliffe Mental Hospital on an island outside of Boston. But in the twist ending, he is told that he's actually a patient named Andrew Ladis, who was serving time for killing his wife. His doctor was allowing Ladis to live out a fantasy of being a U.S. Marshal, hoping that bringing it to a conclusion would help snap him out of his dissociative identity disorder. By the end, he relapses, and he must be lobotomized. But he says, This place makes me wonder, which would be worse? To live as a monster? Or to die as a good man? This said audience is losing their own minds over the ending. If you were confused as to what really happened in the movie, don't worry, you're not alone. Even Leonardo DiCaprio told the director Martin Scorsese, I have no idea where I am or what I'm doing. While DiCaprio and Scorsese refused to reveal the meaning behind the quote, most agree that Andrew Ladis actually was cured, but he simply could not live with the guilt of his true memories. The screenwriter, later Caligridis, adapted the screenplay from the novel by Dennis Lehane. The story was so complex that Caligridis had to make a 40 to 50 page outline, which took her an entire year before she actually wrote down any of the dialogue. Every time you watch the film, you'll discover a new perspective and you'll pick up clues about the truth that you never saw before. Number 4. Total Recall In the 1990 movie Total Recall, Arnold Schwarzenegger plays a man named Quaid who pays for a service called Recall, which promises to let anyone live any fantasy scenario. He says that he wants to become a secret agent, but before the procedure finishes, he finds himself caught up in a series of strange events that lead him to the planet Mars. At the end of the movie, we see him standing on Mars, looking out onto the horizon with his new lover. Fans of the film have debated over the years whether the events of the movie were actually happening, or if it was all part of the fantasy secret agent scenario that he was paying for. According to the director Paul Verhoeven, Total Recall doesn't say whether it's reality or it is a dream. It's really saying there's this reality and there's that reality, and both exist at the same time. So basically, everyone is right, and people can't stop arguing about that. Number 3. Inception The characters of the movie Inception enter dreams within dreams. They are on a mission to insert an idea into the subconscious of a powerful CEO. The only trouble is that Leonardo DiCaprio's character, Cobb, was haunted by the memory of his wife, and she keeps trying to sabotage their mission. Each of the characters carry a totem with them to help them distinguish dreams from reality. At the end of the movie, Cobb finds closure in his wife's death, and he regains the custody of his children. The camera focuses on Cobb's totem, which is a spinning top. It looks as though it might topple at any second, signifying that he is in reality. But the movie ends before we learn if he is truly in a dream or if he isn't. Fans everywhere debated with one another over this scene and what it meant. However, the true message behind the ending of Inception is that once Cobb has the kids, he chooses to make this his new reality. And according to Christopher Nolan, he would rather the audience draw their own conclusions about what the ending really means. Number 2. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind was a very trippy sci-fi romantic comedy. The couple, named Clementine and Joel, break up and choose to pay for a procedure that erases the memories of their relationship. It had many fans watching over and over again to try and see any hidden messages. Some people out there have a theory that Clementine and Joel have erased the memory of their relationship multiple times, and they are doomed to repeat this process forever. Since Clementine dyes her hair a lot, they theorize that each color represents a new timeline. In reality, Clementine truly does change her hair color through the course of just one relationship. Each color represents the season of their love story, from green in the spring of new love to blue in the icy cold winter of breakup. 
The first time they got together, Joel was depressed and expected Clementine to be his manic pixie dream girl who was going to solve all of his problems and make him a happier person. When she failed to live up to that expectation, things fell apart. In the end, Joel and Clementine find one another again and choose to give their relationship a second chance. They no longer go into the relationship expecting perfection, which will ultimately be healthier for them. Number 1. Fight Club the first rule of Fight Club is you don't talk about Fight Club unless, of course, we're making a video about the 1999 movie. After the film premiered, young men everywhere began idolizing Tyler Durden and real-life fight clubs sprang up across the world. However, those that walked away from the movie feeling compelled to punch somebody in the face and burn their house down, well, they completely missed the point. The audience can relate on some level to Durden's rejection of consumerism and working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. But his all-out rejection of society is incredibly dangerous. It is meant to show how easy it is for desperate men to rally behind radical ideologies. In the final scene, Project Mayhem blows up the entire city. We are meant to recognize that he is crazy and not someone to be idolized. During an interview, the author of Fight Club, Chuck Palahniuk, said, Ideally, each person would leave Fight Club and go on to live whatever their dream was, that they would have a sense of potential and ability that they could carry into whatever it was that they wanted to achieve in the world. It wasn't about perpetuating Fight Club itself. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and do not forget to subscribe. Also, I've got another channel called Biographics. You'll find that linked to below. And as always, thank you for watching.